Good morning students. In the earlier video, we have discussed what is BCNF and we have solved one question. In this video, we will discuss one more question related to BCNF for better understanding. They have given a relation R which consists of attributes X, Y, Z and the FDs they have given and even they have given the candidate keys also. They are asking us to check whether the relation R is in BCNF or not and if it is not in BCNF, they are asking us to decompose. So the question is consists of two parts. First, we need to check whether it is in BCNF or not. If it is not in BCNF, we have to decompose it into further and make it into BCNF. Okay. So first we will do the first part. We will check it whether it is in BCNF or not. As they have given the candidate keys, we can easily find what are the prime attributes. The attributes which are there in the candidate keys will come into the prime attributes list. X, Y, Z. All the attributes of the relation R is there in the prime attributes. So the non-prime attributes will be empty. Not what is the non-prime attributes? The attributes in the which are there in the relation R but not there in the prime attributes list. If you see X, Y, Z are there in the relation R and they are there in the prime attributes list. So non-prime attributes list is empty. So we got the what are the prime attributes and non-prime attributes. We can check whether these relation, these FDs are there in the partial dependency, trans dependency or they are in the BCNF or not. Okay. So X, Y determines Z is there. As the X, Y is a candidate key, then I can say that it is a BCNF. If the left hand side is a, a super key or a candidate key, I can directly say that it is in BCNF. Now comes to this one. Z determines Y. Z determines Y means Z is a non-prime attribute. So prime attribute and Y is also non Y is also a prime attribute. So it is not a partial dependency, even it is not a trans dependency. So I can say that it is up to 3NF. Now we will check whether it is in BCNF or not. If it is in BCNF, then we can say that the entire relation is in BCNF. Now if you see that Z is not a candidate key, it is part of the candidate key. Then you can ask me sir, why if it is part of the candidate key, why it is not a partial dependency? Right hand side is a prime attribute. If right hand side is a non-prime attribute, we can say that it is a partial dependency. So left hand side is not a super key or not a candidate key. I can say that this one is not a BCNF. So as that FD is not in BCNF, I can say that the relation is not in BCNF. Then you can ask me what is the highest normal form? As there is no partial dependencies, I can say that it is 2NF. As there is no transfer dependencies, I can say 3NF. Among 2NF and 3NF, which is highest? 3NF is highest. So I can say that the relation R is in 3NF, but not in BCNF. Now we will do the second step. What is the second step? If it is not in BCNF, we identify that it is not in BCNF, then decompose it. So we will do the decomposition process. So the original relation R is having the attributes X, Y, Z. Now find the FD which has created the problem for you. Means which is not in BCNF. The FD is Z determines Y. Okay. Take the left hand side. Left hand side is Z. Calculate the closure of it. What is the closure of Z? Z closure will consist of Z and Y. So this relation R is decomposed now into R1 which is having the attributes as Z comma Y. Okay, as we have taken the Z, we will leave the Z like that. What are the extra attributes you got? Y. So cancel that Y from the original relation R and take the remaining attributes X, Z. So the relation R is now decomposed it into R1 and R2 consists of Z and Y, X and Z attributes respectively. Okay, now we will check what are the FDs will come into this relation and what are the FDs which will come into this relation. Now one thing we have to do it is that after decomposing whether this decomposition is lossless decomposition or not. Okay. If you see that what is the three rules for the lossless decomposition. If you combine or if you perform union of attributes of R1 and R2 you should get attributes of R. X is there. Y is there, Z is there. So you got all the attributes of 
relation R. So the first condition is satisfied. The second condition is there should be a common attribute. Z is the common attribute. And the third condition is the common attribute should be a candidate key. So Z and Y, if I take Z will be a candidate key for this relation R1. I will prove it later. Okay. So I can say that the relation R is decomposed into R1 and R2, which is a lossless decomposition. So then I can continue further. What about functional dependency preserving is happening or not? Z determines Y will belongs to this one. X, Y, Z determines Z will not come here. Okay. Are you able to understand? So functional dependency preserving is not happening. But lossless decomposition is happening. So functional dependency preserving is an optional. So we no need to worry about it. Now take this one. Now your relation R1 is having the attributes Z comma Y with an FD Z determines Y is there. Calculate the candidate key. The candidate key is Z closer we will check. Z closer will give me Z and Y. It got all the attributes in relation R1. What about Y closer? Y closer will give me only Y. So I can say that for this relation R1, I am not talking about R and R2. I am talking only about R1. The candidate key is Z. Once you got the candidate key, what is the prime attribute? Prime attribute is Z. Non-prime attribute is Y. If you see that, left hand side you have the candidate key. When I can say that it is in DC enough, when the left hand side is a candidate key or super key, then I can say that it is in DC enough. So why you are going directly for the DC enough? Already we have proved that it is not a partial dependency, trans dependency. But earlier it was not DC enough, now it became DC enough. So I can say that this relation R1 is in DC enough. Okay, so original relation R is not in BCNF. After decomposition, R1 and R2 are there in the BCNF. Now, why you are saying R2 is in BCNF? As it does not consist of any FD. So, I can say that it is in BCNF. I hope you have understood with this example how to check whether the relation R is in BCNF or not. If it is not in BCNF, how to decompose it into relations such a way that the sub-relations are there in the BCNF. Okay, thank you so much.